get right into the heart of the feeling with people. The world and its creatures fascinate me. This We can sit here and say all these words and it might seem a little fluffy and, and it is a little bit fluffy. That fascination is my style. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a recipe for burnout. No social media. So Lanny's a man of extremes in case you don't know that already. Go deep. Yeah, we go deep. We do actually, we can never answer anything just straight. It's harder to go. I find it harder to go surface. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, noon. It's noon. Yeah, noon. It's noon, midday. Kids are at school. Kids at school. First we have a wedding in Cayman Islands. Then we have to teach in Nigeria. And then we go to Turkey for a month. A whole month to just travel in Turkey. With the kids, and so that'll be fun. Yeah, all right. And uh, well, we've met a couple times before. I think uh, first time was in, in Porto, drinking port oh, and eating wow. chocolate. And, uh, Portugal, yeah. I think you met him before that. No, I think Boda for something, didn't you? Yeah, so. online, online, but uh, it was the first yeah. time and uh, uh, we had, uh, I think, a wild party at the end. And uh, Wild parties uh, in all those conferences, eh? Well, th that was where I was going to because last year you guys were in Amsterdam and uh, at the master seminars. Well, that one was, that one was wild. I think we left before it got really wild though. Like, yeah, yeah. I heard people but, were jumping into the river. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But but you guys always seem to create uh, good times around you, right? Always having fun. What's what's that yeah, about? Yeah. Uh, you are bringing it everywhere in the world? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily we, I don't think bring, we bring it, it, but we don't <laughs> discourage we don't it. it. We don't necessarily create it, but I, I don't think we discourage it. It's fun to and, have fun. Yeah. Uh, last time in Amsterdam, uh, there was a, like a whole shopping list uh, with uh, with hats and and booze and <laughs> you remember no but for what uh, we had a shopping list for our presentation <laughs> yeah yeah oh, that's right yeah, you yeah. needed your michael jackson hat that's right yeah yeah need the oh, MJ yeah. Hat. we went, oh, out, yeah, we went out and bought booze who uh um someone helped us with that uh, <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we always make sure, yeah, we try and bring that energy to our oh, our presentations for sure because conferences can be a lot of information. And uh, sometimes the focus, I feel, is like too much on the information and not enough on just the feeling. So we try and break that all down in our presentations and just get right into the heart of the feeling with people. I think there we were talking about our dance floor lighting. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean, if you're talking about dance floor lighting, you may as well have like a atmosphere that's kind of like a dance floor. Else is, else I've, is just I've got I've got that clip for you. I made a little video of your Michael Jackson uh, <laughs> dance. That's have you cool. seen it already? Oh, yeah. I no, forgot we, about that. We opened with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We'll right. I'll send it to you later. Okay. It's OK. Uh, so uh, th there aren't many wedding photographers who haven't seen your work uh, and uh, everybody has an opinion about it. But uh, what I'd like to hear from you guys is how would you describe your work? It's hard to describe our work because in order to describe it, we need words and language. And I always find one of the things about words, when we use it to describe something, it also... It has to say what it is not in order to say what it define is. What, it, what it is. And so it's tricky because, um, you know, our, our style or the feeling of our work is, um, you know, there, there are words, but that's all they are, right? Words mean different things to, to different people. And I, I had to do this last week. Uh, somebody asked me to describe um, my style, um, to like define it. That's even <laughs> worse, right? Yeah, right, and um, style, right? I mean, style is just a yeah. word as well. 
But I, so I sat down, I thought about it and thought about it. And I arrived at the shortest, most concise sentence I could. Um, but it's very, it's very general. But what it is, is what I came up with is um, the world and its creatures fascinate me. That fascination is my style. And so by that, I mean, um, when, when I, like, like when I, when I pick a up a camera and I go to make photographs, um, I'm never intentionally, like now, I'm not intentionally um, striving for some sort of a look or aesthetic or style um, or any real adjectives associated with the work. Um, I'm, like as much as possible, I'm trying to just be drawn to photograph what I'm drawn to and shoot it the way I'm drawn to do so. Yeah, and I would say, um, yeah, finding what interests us, right? And making it as much as possible about them and their story and not about us and our photography. Now, we can say all this, we can sit here and say all this words and it might seem a little fluffy and, and it is a little bit fluffy. And I gotta say, if you'd, ask us, if you'd asked us this question two years ago, we would have had a completely different answer. Yeah. And we're sort of at a stage in our career, and I kind of feel like the more you mature as a photographer and the more you mature as an artist, the harder it is to describe what you do. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we're at that stage um, not, I'm not saying we're mature. I feel like we're still very much in the infancy of, of what we can achieve as artists and, and photographers, but we're at a stage where it's really hard to put words to what we do. So, um, so there, there's our long winded answer. <laughs> yeah, we would have used it. Two years ago, I definitely would have like, we would have said bold. Grasp, grasping for adjectives. Yeah. Bold. Yeah. Right, but bold means something different to you and to me and to everybody, right? It's, uh, it, so this is a lot more than just creating epic photos, right? Well, that's what we want it to be more of because creating epic photos does not feed me and well, meaning into my yeah. life or even meaning into our client's life necessarily. Like, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a recipe for burnout. And so I feel like in order to stay inspired in this industry and to stay wanting to create work, we've had to sort of redefine what Epic is and yeah. What, yeah. what it means to be a photographer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's basically what I'm saying is Epic is a word, right? And so a few years ago, Epic would have meant something to me. Um, and really the essence of what we're trying to do is create Epic imagery, whatever Epic means. But what Epic means to us now um, might be entirely different from what other photographers mm -hmm. consider to be epic, right? Uh, for me right now, an epic, an epic image is, is an image that, that a moves you. A Sorry, a, a photograph that, that moves you in some way. It resonates. There's, so the epic doesn't necessarily have to be just like eye candy. Epic can, can be a feeling that... Because mm -hmm. um, what we realized, what we were doing and what was very unsustainable for us, especially at the beginning of our career. Although we sort of had to go through the stage in order to sort of break through the other side was we were very good at creating these lifeless eye candy photos, like these lifeless representations of, of interesting ideas and interesting use of light. And, but, and they get us attention for sure. I mean, they're part of the reason we've got to where we've got today, but at the heart of the image, they were really lifeless. Yeah, like was, lacking the soul. Lacking the soul, and they didn't make you feel anything. They made you look at and see the photographer in the photo. You'd see, but I mean, photography is really um, just a tool for an expressing an interest in something else. And we we had uh, an overabundance of interest in photography at the beginning of our career, and not enough interest in the people and the relationships and the moments that we were photographing. And so there's been a, a really big shift in the last couple of years yeah. into, into an interest in what we're photographing and in, instead of an interest in photography. More and more for us, I'd say it's, it's a feeling. We're seeing and recognizing that underlying it all is a feeling. It has to communicate a feeling. It has to make you feel something. 
Um, so, I mean, that's what we're striving for our work to be about. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot easier to say in, a, in an interview to then versus put into practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, to, uh, to get to know you guys a little bit better, uh, I've got some questions for you, but, um, so I'm going to ask Lenny things about you, Erica, and uh, oh, okay. the other way around. So, uh, well, that'll be interesting. Wow. Oh, I'm excited. This will work out. It's also incredibly dangerous. You got to realize that you're going into the danger zone here. Definitely, definitely. All right, Lenny. Uh, what's Erica's favorite way to spend an off wedding weekend? Um, with four of us, um, especially the two of them, Adeline and Timmy. Hopefully, me too. Um, exercise outside in nature. Um, good food, probably mostly home cooked. The two of us together, a glass of wine. Um, and uh, no work, no talking about work, no social media. Yeah. Zero social media. Um, yeah, that's nailed nice. it. Nailed it. Did I nail it? It's totally <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer too many questions at once, huh? All right, uh, Erica, uh, mm -hmm. what's Lanny's favorite midnight snack? Oh, okay. Well, that really depends. It depends. So Lanny's a man of extremes, in case you don't know that already. And he's either eating healthy to the extent that he's only eating lean protein, lean protein and vegetables and going into full ketosis or he's eating completely unhealthy. So if he's on his health train, uh, he wouldn't have a midnight snack because he'd be fasting at that point, right? Yeah, yeah he'd be fasting. If he's not eating healthy, uh, probably, uh, let's see, a bowl of Cheerios with milk. <laughs> half and half cream with Cheerios. <laughs> I mean, if that's if that's what we have laying around. If that's what you have laying around. <laughs> that's not too bad. That's yeah. it's medium healthy, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. It depends on what books you're reading, I guess. Okay. <laughs> right, <laughs> Lenny. What's what's Erica's favorite country outside of Canada? I might say New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's most similar to Canada. <laughs> Mountainous, <laughs> wild, clean, friendly. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only so, thing that was lacking there was the food. The food wasn't great. Yeah, the food left something to be desired. Yeah. Erica, mm -hmm. what was Lenny's most embarrassing moment on stage or during a workshop? Yeah. yeah. yeah there's always moments at our workshops where you and I are. Oh, yeah. Maybe sometimes when we fought. And got in the, during workshop. <laughs> awkward, Where we get in like a domestic awkward domestic disputes. In domestic the middle, dispute, in the middle of right workshop. in the middle of workshop. That I mean, that happens every workshop. Yeah, that's it. that's part of the course for us. Yeah, uh, but I'm not really embarrassed. We're by used to it, it because I feel like I feel like real. what's really important, um, especially when we're in we're we, we're off often in this sort of position where there's a lot of people watching us whether it's on stage or at a workshop or in a podcast uh, i think yeah. it's that much more important to be real and authentic so we don't really sugarcoat anything like yeah. so when you have an opinion and lenny's opinion is different you will fight it like right there right then oh yes oh yeah erica yes. holds no punches <laughs> <laughs> i do i will fight it right there right then also the time when uh, you dropped Drop the flash during a during a ceremony like early Jeez. on, early on it was an outdoor ceremony on this like outdoor deck porch, and then there was a stair wooden staircase that went up to like a, a loft, and so Erica was up above shooting below the balcony, and then as she started coming down the stairs, her flash fell off her camera, in the middle of the ceremony and was like. Boom, 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 <laughs> and then the most embarrassing part about that was that I, under my breath, I was like, shit. And then I think people it heard me say shit. Was it really under your breath? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Everybody heard it. 
Not American Red Brett. I would say Lanny's biggest strength is his, which is also his biggest crutch, in my opinion, mm -hmm. would be his um, tenacity. Like his ability to just work so hard at something to the point where he's got sort of laser vision on it and nothing else matters. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 Tenacity, is that the right word? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Determination, well, tenacity, ability to work hard, but at the expense of everything else sometimes, mm. including yeah. reason. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lenny. What do you love most about Erica? Mm -hmm. God. This is uncomfortable. Hmm? I said this is uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I love. I just wanted to be honest, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the first word that came to mind. Her honesty. Her raw unfiltered um honesty about um life <laughs> um and herself uh so that's one of the ones that comes to mind that's nice yeah her passion for for life yeah making the most of it and continually uh wanting to grow in every way. In every way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in some ways I don't want to grow. We won't get into that. <laughs> well, let's turn it around in a different direction. Okay. Erica, what do you hate most about Lenny? <laughs> when you marry someone or when you're committed to someone for life, not necessarily marriage, but when you're truly committed to something, whether it's a person or a craft or a, a art or a sport, or you got to love it enough to hate it sometimes. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so I love Lanny enough that I can hate him sometimes and still be married to him. Wow. Yeah. That's a good <laughs> So, uh, Erica, what's the most valuable thing that Lenny has ever lost at a wedding? Besides my temper? <laughs> Do you ever lose that? Oh, God. <laughs> Every wedding. Yeah, uh, but it's not like a temper tantrum. It's more of like a passive-aggressive losing of marbles. Um, we lose something at every wedding, yeah. actually. Batteries. Every wedding we lose something. We yeah. Batteries. We left a camera at we a left wedding. A cam yeah, we lose something at every now Lenses. valuable. Uh, one of the closest ones was in St. Lucia when we were um, we just finished the ceremony, we're starting to make portraits, and I went to change one of the memory cards in one of our cameras. So we had four cameras. And I realized that I didn't have my pouch of memory cards. So we didn't have any more memory cards with us. The only memory we had left was what was ever remaining on the other three cameras. And they were both almost full. They were all almost full. We realized that we left our sack of memory cards in the hotel an hour's in drive away in this block from the safe. And yeah. we still had like several hours of coverage, <laughs> of coverage yeah. to go. So we hired the hotel staff to break into our safe and then give it to a taxi driver. And anyways. Yeah. That was, yeah. that's that's bad yeah all right lenny uh your time to make up what's uh, erica's biggest strength as a photographer um, i'd say her ability to be present so to uh, maybe i'm wrong Pay attention to the subtle things that are going on and notice, notice potential, notice moments unfolding, um, notice subtle little, um, subtle little glances or touches or things that might elude other photographers who are too, um, 
too busy worrying and overthinking. I'd say she can, not always, but she can um, quiet the mind and just um, oh, be I present wish and I feel. Could quiet my mind. No, but there's a lot of situations where she sees something or feels something or gravitates towards some potential that I was just totally oblivious to. Um, oh, so, okay. yeah, I think that's your biggest strength. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, I know your mind is also a very um, uh, tormented place. That's <laughs> totally. <laughs> um, oh, but also, but also, just I would say technically, like she's really good at um, at staying calm and being able to like um, think through, work through technical things at in serious situations, like when there's critical things happening and something's not working with our flash or our camera and and she has to like think and make adjustments um, quickly, you're really good at that. Way better than me. Thanks. Yeah. So like first dance and the light's not working or like having to adjust on the fly um, quickly. She's really good at that. I can nail, I can nail that. Mm -hmm. That one I can agree with sort of. The first one I'm like, oh. Yeah, and that's more than just taking a battery out and putting it back in. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe that's what maybe that's what you need to do. But she'll like she'll problem solve um, even when it's like high stress situations. She's able to problem solve, and think cl time think time. clearly. I just panic. True. All right. So, uh, who starts the most work relating fights between you two? Who starts the fight? He'll start the conversation, and then I'll start the fight. Yeah, I'd agree. <laughs> because I start. Right. But it's his fault because he shouldn't have brought it up in the first place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it escalates quickly. It's like that. Yeah. yeah. So um, you guys uh, won quite a few awards uh, internationally and uh, also last round in the Masters of Wedding Photography. Mm. Um, what, what's the, the main reason for you guys to keep submitting to contests? Okay, can I make a confession first? Of course. <laughs> no, you can't. I can't, I can't. I actually have not even looked at the awards in, in the last two years. You um, haven't submitted. Uh, in, no, Lanny in submits for me. So I don't even actually know what I won in, in the one that you're referring to. Um, I don't like awards. I don't like what they, they do to my, my motivation and my, um, just my mental state, to be honest. Um, yeah. So for that reason, I have just completely removed myself from them, which probably isn't a very good tactic, to be honest. I should probably just explore why that is first. But awards, I, I, and there is scientific proof to back this up as well, actually, along with Facebook likes and Instagram likes. You know, they give you this initial jolt of energy and initial jolt of motivation. Um, but you're it's like a sugar high you dive deeper down into the valley after that and in order to climb back out it's like you need more likes and you need more awards and you need more accolades and so it's we've the relationship i've got with them now is that they're just purely propaganda and marketing to get in front of the eyes of potential clients um And that's it. Yeah. Because <laughs> for, for any validation, they don't provide any validation for me whatsoever anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, I was going to say, we actually don't um, continue to submit to um, very many awards. I think it's only, we only did, we only participated in two last year. Um, so we kind of pick and choose. And we, on, on the one hand, there's the, the stuff Eric is talking about, and on the other hand, there's there is the um, the propaganda, right? I mean, it is it has been great for us from a marketing perspective, yeah. and really um, the very small investment, like financial investment, we've made into into contests essentially is just it's just marketing, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. it's a it's a marketing um, investment, yeah. and we sort of recognize that 
um, for whatever reason, we, we sort of, we have two markets, really. When we first started out, it was just um, wedding clients, potential wedding clients, right? Yeah. Brides and grooms and grooms and grooms, 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 grooms. That was yeah. that was our market, right? But over time, what's happened is is we we now have another market, and that's photographers. Um, so our education brand also factors into our marketing, mm. and so when we consider that when we consider that market, photographers for um, for education. Um, um, photographers getting photographers, married. Photographers' weddings actually has become a bit of a new. So for, for that market, um, I think that the contest has helped, um, or the, the recognition um, through those contests has helped because it's just helped put our work in front of their eyes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really that um, one of the most important commodities in our business is attention. Mm -hmm. And um, that attention comes from having the work um, seen, mm -hmm. right? And so that, that's kind of been the premise of our whole business, our whole marketing strategy. Like when you boil it down, it's, it's always been make really good work and show it to the world. Mm -hmm. And the show it to the world part is the constant juggling of whatever, um, whatever streams are available and it's changed mm -hmm. right it was facebook and then it became instagram it's whatever social platforms are are currently and so we've got our website our portfolio our blog and and contest is just sort of another avenue through which to present mm -hmm. our work to our potential market mm -hmm. yeah and i think uh, the, the power of contest is is amazing like i feel like the whole wedding photography industry has changed had a major shift in the past five to 10 years because of the contests that have, have become popular. Oh, and if you, if you feel, if you feel like I do, if someone feels like I do about contests, like if I didn't have Lanny and I was working more solitary, um, I'd probably outsource it. Like I'd literally find someone to enter them for me. Cause you I have really, outsourced it. I have outsourced, outsourced it to Lanny. <laughs> yeah. I outsource all sorts of things to him. But, um, cause they are, they have helped, a lot there's no denying that they have helped us grow our business a lot and they've helped the entire industry shift into different genres so but they've also i've seen them contribute to lots of um torment and turmoil for mm -hmm. um many artists mm -hmm. so the main like one of the main lessons we've learned is just you can you can never shoot for awards um and, and it's easier to say than to actually put into practice, but it can't come into your thinking and it can't guide you in the way that you mm -hmm. run your business or the way that or you- Or your creative process. Your creative it, process. It totally fucks with your creative process. If you're yeah, not if, 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 so. uh, if a contest or um, recognition is um, guiding your decisions about what you're doing with your camera, what you're doing with your lighting, mm -hmm. um, then I think inevitably it's gonna result in um, in, in work that's not as um and but work that's not as as good as you could if you just yeah. more uh let um what interests you and what your gut is is sort of drawing you towards doing and composing and lighting based on that versus um and it's not just contests right it's just we're thinking about what's going to get the likes or what's going to get um attention yeah but also the the what you just said has a little another side to it as well because of i mean the whole reason why the wedding photography industry has changed is because people are inspired by what they see in contests and that's not necessarily yeah. guiding their decisions but it's inspiring the way that they see and shoot and feel yeah so yeah it's mm -hmm. one of those things that's really good and also can be really harmful mm -hmm. and have you always felt uh, like this about contest Erica or is it in the last few years that this is uh... yeah, actually started pretty soon after uh, we started our career and uh, I'd say within the first year I was like Ugh. I was I just didn't like how I would care about the results and let that that result transfer to whether or not I was a good photographer um, it made me compare myself to Lanny a lot uh, yeah. especially at the beginning of our career, Lanny was really good at making award-winning images and they're not even images that we necessarily like, um, anymore, but 
we were really good at fooling the world into into thinking we were making this eye candy that everybody loved and but they didn't love it they just loved the look of it you know so no i felt this way for a long time and so then i went into this huge sort of journey of figuring out where where motivation comes from and where creativity comes from and where so it has actually catapulted me into this this area of deeper deeper growth and and consciousness which is which is good so yeah uh, um what was there like a time where you think that uh submitting to awards made you become better photographers like in the start i'd say definitely one of the things that's driven us throughout our career has been drive drive to make really good work and there was probably a time when the the recognition or validation that came from contest was um for me at, at least a, at least somewhat fed into that drive right to want to make really good work um but i, I think with or without contests that drive is is going to be there for me whatever there's going to be some other um, driving force that makes me want to make the best work I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your, uh, your favorite images that I asked you to, uh, to send to me. Right. And uh, you guys were actually the first one to, uh, to pick non wedding images, uh, which is uh, uh, pretty exciting. So uh, let's see where this is going to lead us. Uh, um, like the first image that we're, we're going to look at? Ooh. Well, this was actually the first one that popped into, uh, into my mind. And you didn't specify. You said three of your favorite images that are, I can't remember, yeah. most special to you or mean the yeah. most. The, most that you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about. Yeah. So, the, so that was actually the first one that jumped into my mind. And really, the only ones that jumped into my mind immediately. Yeah, so that one Photos is of our kids. Yeah, which is yeah, it was actually a really interesting process to that that because I've been trying to pick pictures to hang in our house right now, and That's... you saying this, I was like, which pictures do I like the most? And they're all ones where we can see something like some sort of see into the soul of our kids, right? And and so that one of Madeline, it's such a simple photo we were just hiking along this ridge in nepal and she was just squatting down and she's such a thinker and she was just sitting there squatted taking a break from the hike and her hand was like that and it was just yeah, that's kind it of how just, she sits it's just her. kind of how she sits and it just reminds us of her and her wisdom like she's one of these old souls she's only 11 years old but she's got so much wisdom she's in always sort of had this this um We've always had this sense that she's like she's like an old wise soul within this little this little oh girl. she is yeah and she and another exercise we did recently was for a friend dave moss who's uh gathering all this information from different photographers right now um and he asked me this question about who is your biggest mentor and i was like hmm, well i don't in the photography world I was like, well, I don't really have a mentor. But then when I really thought about it, I was like, you know, who probably influences me the most is Madeline. Because she's so compassionate and she's so kind and she's got so much empathy and patience, mm -hmm. which, which are all traits that I could use a little bit more of. Um, Plus. And so this, this photo emanates, is that a word? Emanates that? Sure. Okay. Let's go with it. <laughs> It shows that wisdom and it's, it's not, she's not doing anything. She's just being right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, Eric and I realized, I think our, our work kind of um, shifted a couple of years ago um, or started to shift and uh, grow in new directions. And, and that stemmed from photographing or observing and photographing our kids. Mm -hmm. So when we started bringing them with us and traveling around the world with them um, and trying to kind of document that experience um, as we traveled. I wouldn't even say it was trying to document an experience. It was just 
photographing because we were interested in what we they were, were doing. Super and, interested in them, what we were doing, where we, where we were traveling, how they were experiencing this whole um, adventure, and. But it was never I got documented. No, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. But from that, we realized we, we saw that because we had this inherent in, inherent interest in our kids, right? Mm -hmm. And so the camera was not about photography or technique it was about showing this genuine interest that we had in our kids and the, Im the image the, the, the photos that came out of that really drove it home for us that that's where the soul of photographs that really resonate and really communicate um uh sense of, of person and place are ones that are made from that place of curiosity and genuine interest mm -hmm. and so we started to find ways to um, to um, bring that over into our wedding work. It really changed our mindset at weddings. We really shifted away from about cameras and photography and techniques towards um, people. people, like actually connecting and being there present at the wedding. And, um, and seeing people the way we see our kids. Exactly, like really seeing and really listening. Um, that allowed us to... Um, that allowed photos that I don't think we would have been able to create before mm -hmm. or that we wouldn't have we wouldn't have seen um, Yeah, it's mostly not, it's not even create it's it's seen and capturing. Yeah. They, they sort of started to find us these photos versus us having to go and try to find and, and create mm -hmm. um, And so I, I would say that yeah, both of our kids have been our biggest mentors in life, but also in photography mm -hmm. I say without um, without our kids, our photography would be much different than it is now. I think it'd be much more surface. Yeah. 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 And then, I mean, all three photos that we, we chose for you are our family photos. And um, none of them are what we'd consider like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing image. It could be a na National Geographic or anything, but it reminds us how our kids make us feel. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's an important realization as a photographer because you know when when you sort of judge all your images based on how they stack up to other images right as opposed to um, at least I do that like uh, you know I'll judge the 1200 images that we deliver for a wedding I'll judge all these moments of grandma and aunt and that aren't necessarily great photos but the bride and groom love those people and so they're going to view those photos the same way that we view these photos of Marilyn and Timmy, right? Um, because they love that person in the photo. And so not, it's sort of made us, yeah. But, but I would say like both of the ones that we chose, the one of Madeline and then, and then the one of Timmy, we chose them because of the feeling. Like we yeah. look at that photo of Madeline and it makes us feel what we feel about Madeline. It makes us we feel like we're seeing who she is mm -hmm. inside. Um, and same with the one we chose for Timmy. Mm -hmm. It's like that to us, we see Timmy, we see our son. Um, and, but really if, if you think about like, what is it in these two images that do that? Obviously there are children, but there are all kinds of, um, you know, uh, photographic elements that are taking place in these images that are allowing that feeling to shine through. Whether it's for, for us, though, like they're not going to necessarily us. shine through for a stranger in those right. Images. But but the re but right. but the the lack of distractions, the both cases, the frame is filled. Um, you mm -hmm. know, the, the light works. It doesn't have to be epic and amazing, but the light works. Mm -hmm. um, all of these things, the the clean, the simple, the composition, um, are allowing their character to shine through, allowing mm -hmm. us to to have that feeling. So at the root of it, there is still good good photography is is key. Right, um, but it can be very simple. It doesn't have to yeah. be. Yeah, So that's yeah. why we chose uh, the one of Madeline and the one of Timmy. Mm -hmm. And then the third one we chose was just a selfie. Like literally, I think I was holding our our, yeah. our little uh, mirrorless camera yeah. uh, in the back of the rickshaw in the tuk tuk. The, the tuk tuk. Yeah. Was it, was it in? I think it was in, in India. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just remember that moment right we would just remember what we were feeling in that moment we were all like home for us is sort of changed definition like home for us is just where the four of us are together and so that can be in the back of a tuk tuk in india and but that it brings us like that photo brings when, us when we mentioned it we're both like yeah 
because it like literally it brings us back to that moment like we remember what we were feeling what we were thinking um kind of where we are all all five senses you know how it felt to be there and we can see each of each of us in there like in, in our eyes and madeline with the ice cream around her lips it was just everything about it just brings us right back to that um place in time mm -hmm. so yeah it's fun yeah. And, and as this change the way you photograph uh in weddings as well like uh, are you uh less trying to make epic shots out of everything and more yeah, totally. document yeah. uh, the real thing yeah exactly yeah. yeah it's it's usually the more quote unquote epic shots come out of when we're really bored and there's nothing going on right although as in the ones where we've created and yeah used, where we've used, used to yeah and, but the one you know we want to be super con and what we what they see in someone that they love might not be super obvious to us right and it might not be obvious to them too like uh, they're not going to be like oh i love how my aunt um puts her hand up on her chin or i love how my aunt gestures that like they don't even know what they love about their aunt we just need to know, we just need to be curious enough that we see that person mm -hmm. for who they are and just try and photograph them. And, and, the, and the image might not mean anything to us or even never go in our portfolio, right? But it, it's, it's a picture of someone they love, right? And so we've realized the power more of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the power more of just simple images yeah. of, of people that don't necessarily have anything complex behind them. Yeah, but I'd say we're at the root of it. We're still striving to make interesting, unexpected mm -hmm. compositions, to fill the frame, to use the light to our advantage as much as possible. All those things are still there. But I'd say the thing that shifted is what we're paying attention to. Yeah. Right? The, cu the curiosity um, um, has shifted away from what can I do with my camera to um, what's happening here and what what subtle little things about the characters in this story are um, worth noticing so things like that wouldn't have popped out at us before now are we're noticing things that wouldn't have noticed before yeah you know nice and um, uh, yeah you also sent me one wedding image or at least oh, yes. I think it's it's taken at a wedding yep. uh, yes uh, it's not a, uh, like a wedding image you see all the time, but um, uh, a, a detailed shot. Um, it's, it, that's, that's kind of why we chose it, because we're certainly not known for detail shots. And actually, details are something we don't no. ever go into a wedding with a checklist of. Like, we, we are honest with our clients, and we say we don't, we don't shoot detail shots unless you request them. Um, so that's kind of what actually it's it's in, it's interesting um, because with this this particular bride like we've got the questionnaire where you know one of the questions is is there any like really important heirlooms or details that you want us to um, to make sure that we capture to capture yeah. right in which case we'll go early and make get all that stuff done um, before the actual stories start happening because we never we never want to be photographing in an ad in an ad in it and then an inanimate object while there's, well, in here, that laughter in the room next door, yeah. right? Because that, in our mind, that's our job. So we get that um, out of the way. But this bride, uh, Jess, said, just, I don't want any photos of my shoes. Whatever you do, she's like, she's it's like, no, not, no photos of my shoes yeah. or my feet. I got size 12 feet and I'm really self conscious so, of them. So, not only are we not drawn to do details photos, but this bride specifically had asked for no photos of her shoes because her feet are very large. And lo and behold, the photo we chose for you is actually a detailed photo of this bride's and shoes. She loved it. She and loved she loved it, it. yeah. Because um, it, tells, it tells a story, right? It's very, it's, it's, it tells, it's, it's like a detail shot that also has a human element, even though there's no human in it, and it has a story behind it. Yeah, yes, it's, so. it, it's kind of, um, I like that photo because it's, it shows the power of one single image. You know, the photo tells a thousand words type thing. And this, this one, that, that feels um, really true because it's like in that one photo, I kind of, I know, I at least have um, a hint of what's been going on, right? It, it speaks to location, um, probably season, time of year. Um, 
Bride's personality. Bride's personality, absolutely. Yeah. Her willingness to get dirty and walk through the muck and and her priorities and not care about right the her pretty sparkly yeah. shoes. Um, and so it says it says a lot um, for a detailed photo, mm -hmm. right? Where there's there's no human or even element of a human. It's an inanimate object um, on on a sidewalk with some with some dead plant matter, right, <laughs> and soil, um, and those whirling together to really communicate um, a lot about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about what was going on there, right? Mm -hmm. Whose shoes they yeah, are? Sure. Yeah. So I think it's a really uh, interesting detail photo. And we just saw it. Erica just noticed it. She saw her shoes sitting there. And she, I remember, I think you said, Jess, I know you said you want no photos of your shoes, but I have to get a photo of your shoes there. Like they were just sitting there with the muck. And the, no, I didn't even say, tell it. You just did it. I just did it. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you also have a, like a favorite wedding that's stuck in your head as like uh, uh, the most, uh, well, uh, most special? Well, I wouldn't say most special, but there was one uh, this fall that really uh, just had um, an amazing feeling to it because it was a wedding on our anniversary, actually. And it's funny because we, we got married up in the mountains at a place that you actually have to helicopter to. It's a backcountry lodge and you, you helicopter into this backcountry lodge. It only sleeps about 20, 25 feet. So the only way, so the only way to get there, mm -hmm. short of like a full day of mountaineering sort of thing. Yeah, so it was our anniversary and they were getting married at the same place that we got married at. And we even gave, we even gave them, we never give discounts, but we did because we just felt like there was just too many signs pointing. The universe was speaking. The universe was speaking. <laughs> and we show up at the helicopter hangar on the morning of the wedding and it's snowing and raining and they can't fly. So basically, and they've got no backup plan. They're basically exactly like us. They, so it's like they're, yeah, they're, they're parents, their family, and only just their closest, their two closest friends, basically. Yeah. That was it. And that was it. And, and they, they, they yeah. canceled. They had to cancel yeah. the wedding. The morning was like, yeah, it was super stressful, waiting around, trying to find out if they were going to be able to fly or not. All their food, like all their expensive food had already got flown up the night before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's at the lodge with the staff, but there's, there's literally no way to get them there. So it was like, that's it. Yeah. The, like the clouds were like in the valley, you can't yeah. fly. Yeah. Wow. So it was super like, I mean, they rolled with it, but I mean, you can imagine how disappointing it was. No backup plan. So yeah. most of the morning they were just like, standing around in the parking lot on their phones trying to find like a place for people to stay that night find a restaurant to go for lunch where are they going to kill time are they still going to do a ceremony they ended up finding this little spot down by the the river down by the riverbank um in the rain in in the rain right, oh, and, no. and, right and then they, and muddy they found lot. a house to rent they found a house to rent that would that, that they could all sleep in and then um they ordered pizza and beer, and they got a Dairy Queen cake, and their name was spelled wrong on the Dairy Queen cake. And it was such, it, all the ingredients were there for an amazing wedding, um, because it was just the people, and didn't matter about the food, didn't matter about the decorations, didn't even matter well, about the, the location. The, the, the coolest part for, for us was, well, one of the coolest parts for all, all of our weddings is when we deliver their photos. Mm -hmm. So once we've done all the work, um, we send them a slideshow yeah. and uh, we make a big, you know, a big, they, they make a date night out of it, right? It's the world premiere of their slideshow. And so they text, a, they text us a photo of them snuggled up with a glass of wine to prove to us that they're like making an evening of this. And we send them their slideshow. And so, you know, this 10, 10 or 12 weeks had gone by and, um, and then we send them the link and then we're like, you know, waiting, waiting. And um, we get the we get the response back from from them, and she says, uh, "Well, she, she said, said Zach Zach said he doesn't need any more photos. This is all he needs." Yeah, he said that he it was like fifty photos. So he never cries. He didn't even cry on the wedding, and he apparently was sobbing for four hours. Four, <laughs> for four hours. No after. way. And it turned. I think what happened was. After you know marinating in that um, 
disappointment of the wedding not falling the way they hoped and dreamed, right? They had this backcountry, um, amazing backcountry plan, and they were going to bring their, their family up there. And, and so they, they, for, for those 10 or 12 weeks, they kind of been disappointing and disappointed and thinking about what could have been. Yeah. And they were, and so yeah, that was they like, were just like, they were bummed. That was their kind of shaping the feeling yeah. and the memory of their wedding. And then when they watched, watched the, saw the photos in their slideshow, it Reframed flipped it. that. It totally flipped it around for them into like, it was perfect. It was everything we needed. It was everything that matters. And um, yeah, it was pretty cool. To, it changed their memories yeah. of the experience because it brought them back to the feeling they had on the wedding day as opposed to the disappointment of, of the cancellations. And, mm -hmm. and so that was like, wow. Yeah, and if, and that was like, wow, we can actually change people's memories mm -hmm. with, with photos. So. And, if, and you know, if you look, if you look at the, at the photo, if you go to the blog post and you look at the photos, it's not like our most oh, the spectacular. Lighting was brutal. It's our most spectacular work. And it's the lighting not, in that. Yeah, we. I mean, it house was, they rented was like it probably was, the it worst. Was, it was challenging. It was definitely um, uh, challenging to but make. It shows that it doesn't matter, photos. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, that's that's not what it's about, and 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 it was probably of all the weddings we photographed, it was in many ways still, even though they didn't fly back to the backcountry lodge, it was still probably the most similar to our wedding mm -hmm. because it was small, it was intimate, it was just about, um, you know, there was no pageantry, mm -hmm. there was no, it was just real core friends and family. Um, and uh, so the vibe was very similar to our own personal wedding. And uh, mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, that one, yeah, that one stands out for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's definitely one of our favorites. I mean, they are, we, we love them all for different reasons, but that one, the the um, the impact of what we do actually yeah. really yeah. Uh, shone was through. shone through, and that doesn't always happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine it's special. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, you said it was on your blog as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was this year. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, this was fun, uh, Lenny and Erica. That How was, was that? It was fun. Talk. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, uh, th thank you a lot for uh, for doing oh, this and uh, be being here with uh, with me. And uh, thank you. Thanks for thinking of us. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. See you later, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for doing this. Uh, all right. Hey. Bye bye. bye, -bye.